Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Lori. If you are new here, welcome. This is a channel all about reselling and my adventures in thrifting. Today, I want to do a ship and shop. I was motivated to film this because it's almost six o'clock and we still have light outside, so it's probably gonna get dark as I do this. I wanna go shopping tomorrow. Typically, when I do a ship and shop, I do shipping in the morning and then I head out and go thrifting. But for today's video, I wanna pull everything in advance and set up a pickup for tomorrow and then just have everything ready to go tomorrow. So if that sounds good, stick around. I'll be right back. Sales have been so bad, so bad, I can't even express it. And I've been really frustrated not understanding why my sales on Poshmark have been so low. Today, this is Monday, March 14th, for the very first time since the start of this month, so we are talking two weeks in, I had a really good day of sales. It's six o'clock now, and I'm at about $300 on the day, so we're gonna pull today's sales, as well as, I'll mention just a couple things from yesterday that didn't ship out. This is one of them. This is a Victoria's Secret Coral Racer Back Padded Bra in a size 34D. It sold for $21, so I'm pretty sure this was a bins purchase because I have it marked for just $1. I had this listed at $25 and an offer came through for 10 or 12 and I had countered I think at 18. Um, because sales have been so bad, I was willing to go, you know, 40% off my price. But in the meantime, somebody else offered me $21. So it's only happened a couple times when somebody sends me an offer and that prompts Poshmark to notify all of the other people who have liked that item that an offer has been made. And so somebody came in and offered me $21. So I was really excited about that for a $1 investment. So that sold. I sold two women's boxes, two women's mystery boxes. Um, so I'm gonna show you what I'm sending in one of them. You've either already seen these or you will see these in a bins haul, but I got these uh, awesome joggers from Lauren Conrad at the bins. So these are going in the mystery box. This Crosby silk tank top. I have to put a couple light things in so it doesn't go over the five pound limit. This is just a basic top from Old Navy in this army green, that was mine, that's going. This dress is a flannel dress that I believe I also picked up at the bins or the pit. And it's a long shirt dress by Woolrich. Looks like it's probably vintage Woolrich. A little leopard print scarf and a pair of Zara jeans. That's going out and then I'll be pulling similar items for my second women's mall brand mystery box. Next up today was a very exciting sale. I picked these up recently at the bins in New Hampshire at the Goodwill Outlet. And these are Ofus or Ufus. This is a great brand to be on the lookout for. They kind of have Crocs vibes, but they are a patented material and they are just so comfortable. I've been wearing these for a while. Actually, my husband still wears his. My brother bought me these years ago in like a, like a flip-flop version. I had never heard of them before and he and his wife swore by them. So my husband and I wore them and Jay has bought one or two pairs since then. They're super comfortable. Found these at the bins and I got this pair on a trade with someone who was kind enough to trade shoes with me or just give me this shoe. These are a size eight. I listed them for $75. I received a $50 offer on them today. A day after I listed them, I countered at $60 and my buyer accepted. I felt pretty confident that I was gonna do well with these because um, these were a limited edition color called galaxy blue they made a galaxy purple i believe and a blue and they have this great sparkle so that was a great return and a very fast flip from the bins this also sold today also from the bins these are items that sold before i did the haul this is a free people ribbed shirt with these sheer shoulders this is a really beautiful item and this sold to a viewer to megan thank you megan i listed it for 38 dollars she liked the item and i think i sent an offer for 30 dollars with discounted shipping so two things from the bins my total cost at the bins was 86 dollars on the day that i went shopping so these sold for 60 this sold for 30 and i have one more item downstairs that already sold it was listed for about a half an hour 
also went to a viewer. It was a vintage L.L. Bean heavy flannel button down shirt shacket. I called it a shacket because it was so thick and it was in red. I bought it for Rocco and he decided that he didn't want it. I listed it for $35. Somebody messaged me and said, well, would you take 20? And I had just listed it, but it was from the bins. I had never even planned on listing it because I thought Rocco was gonna take it. So I said, sure, I'll take 20. $20, $30, 50, plus the 60, $110. Once Poshmark takes their 20%, that pretty much pays for the entire haul. And I got over 40 pieces at the Goodwill bin. So paid for in three items, which is really exciting. Let's go downstairs and grab the rest of the items. And then we'll sign off for tonight. And I'll check back tomorrow when I'm thrifting. These are some of the items that I just got listed today. And this L.L. Bean shirt sold in literally 30 minutes. We just listed it. So I just wanted to double check that the button was there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a men's regular. It's nice and thick. Let me get this off the hanger. I'm gonna have to package that up. All right, we have the fire going. Look at how clear it is down here. I'm so excited to do my organization video, but I'm not quite ready. No surprise on that. Okay, I sold a pair of Vince pants. They're like an olive green finally started to actually inventory my pants because they were just getting out of control. So I had these listed for $50 and I woke up this morning and I thought to myself, I really need to make some sales. So I sent out offers and I think I sent out 30% on this. So $35 with discounted shipping and the buyer accepted right away. And then shortly after that, my next sale came in both on offers to Likers. In that same batch uh, this morning, I sent out an offer on this Vineyard Vines tennis skirt, which is in this bin here. This was listed at $40. It's really nice. It has the built-in shorts with like the silicone to, you know, keep in place. There's the little whale. These, this is a really cute skirt. Sorry, the lighting is terrible here. But I sent out offers for um, $32 with discounted shipping and my buyer accepted. So yeah, those two sales started my day off and I was feeling really good because things have been so quiet. Okay, now the next thing we have to grab is a bundle. The first item was in a bundle from a recent haul and I have this new technique where I keep items from recent hauls in this basket before I even inventory them. And I had a feeling that this Sundance was going to sell pretty quickly after the video went live and the video just went live today and this was the first thing to sell from that haul. So this was in the bundle. It was a three-piece bundle that sold for $84, which was just shy, I think $85 and change would have been 30% off of the list price, and my buyer offered me 84. So this was one piece. The next item in this bundle was this incredible vintage, looks like it was from the 90s, Cape Cod sweatshirt that I kind of wanted to keep. Just didn't look great on me, but I love this piece. I had this listed, I think, for $49. This was the most expensive piece because it was this cool vintage sweatshirt. Isn't that fantastic with the lighthouse? And is this embroidered or is it? Yeah, that's all embroidered. Isn't that a great sweatshirt? That was part of the bundle. There's the old Made in the USA Pro 5000. So that was part of it as well. The last item that went in this bundle was a really pretty top by Cabby that's been around for a while and I'm actually a little shocked that it has sat for so long. Let's see if I can find it quickly in here. It's just like a tunic. It's very lightweight. It has some stripes. It has some gray florals and it's navy blue with a v-neck and yeah that was in there too. That rounded off that bundle so those three pieces were $84. And moments after I accepted that offer, my buyer came back and was interested in a Red Sox hat. She's moving to Massachusetts and she said, I need a Red Sox hat. And I just posted this great women's baseball hat. It was white with neon pink. It's really cute. I was secretly kind of wanting it, but she asked if she could purchase that. So we contemplated between canceling this order and then relisting everything to include that item in her bundle. I had it listed for $28 and we settled on discounting it to $25 and giving discounted shipping. So that's what we did. So this next item sold to the same person who purchased that bundle. So thank you so much for me. So this is the hat 
and the brand is American Needle, which has a really good resale value. It's the first time I've sold this hat, but this was new with tags, and it is such a great Red Sox hat. Hopefully she'll get to wear this to a game this summer. This is where I keep some of my items for my mystery boxes. So I just sold a women's mystery box, so I can really pull anything from out of here. This is a Madewell t-shirt. I'll grab that. Um, there was a pair of jeans in here that I just got at the bins. These are brand new with tag, so I'm going to include that. This is a pair of airy shorts that I think are super cute, lightweight. So I'm going to include a scarf. I know we're a little out of season, but I like to put one accessory in there. And then I think I have a couple things upstairs I'm going to grab. So that's all I'm going to grab from this bin. I was just getting ready to go upstairs and an offer came through. I haven't even accepted it yet, but I plan on accepting it. This was a midi skirt that I listed um, just recently, this is in today's haul as well. Picked this up at the Garment District and I have it listed for $35 and I got a $22 offer on it and I'm going to accept that because you just never know with vintage how long things are going to hang around. And I don't mind taking a smaller offer on an item that flips really quickly. So if this costs $2.50 and I can sell it for $22 in a couple days, that is really okay with me. So I'm gonna accept that offer and add that to my pile. All right, I am shopping outside of Boston now and I am really distracted today and don't share too much of my thrift with me, but I do have a few things to talk about. I'll share with you a few things that I left behind, starting with those Gymshark sweatpants that were just stained and really pilled. Next up are a pair of fry boots. Now these boots were only $5.99, but they were very worn and we are heading out of the season. I think if we were heading into winter, I may have grabbed these, but I decided to leave them behind. This is a Bogner jacket for kids, and I really wanted to grab this because this is a fantastic brand, and the kids' items here were just $2.99. I did pick up a few kids' things that I'll show you later, uh, but this had a lot of pilling, and the cops weren't that great, so I decided to leave this behind. I almost grabbed this for the Real Real. This is a brand that they accepted the Real Real, but when I looked at comps even on the Real Real, it looked like a lot of these blazers had been marked down, sold for about $40, and then I would only get 30% of that. I also end up leaving behind this Patagonia that has some wear around the collar and then just general wear all over. And then I actually get no footage at my next stop because I get pretty overwhelmed as soon as I get there with a purchase that I will tell you all about. So I have a little intro before I go in and then we'll be showing the haul. I'm at my second stop. So the first stop wasn't bad. I luckily hit a couple new racks, otherwise it wouldn't have been great. But with the new rack, I found some really cute free people, platform sandals that were adorable, a couple Lululemon pieces. So I'll share those with you when I get home. One more stop, I have about an hour and then I have a nail appointment. So I gotta be quick here. I guess we should just start with the, a big purchase that I made that I don't even know that I addressed while I was shopping because I was so sucked in in the moment. I actually posted on Instagram and received a lot of feedback from you guys. And my question was, is this Canada Goose worth $250 to resell? The majority of people thought that it was not worth it for the investment. And then shortly after that, in the next two screens on my story on Instagram, I shared with you some of the comps on the Trillium jacket, which is what I believe this is. I actually own this exact coat. It took a while for me to get it. It's about two years old, and I specifically wanted the Canada Goose that did not have the red logo on it. I just wanted it to be a little bit more low key. This may not be as popular, but it was really hard for me to get because the store only had the red ones in stock. I looked at it as an investment, something that I would have for the rest of my life. When I saw this for 75% less, and I'm sure at this point, two years later with inflation, it's probably more expensive and taxes and all that stuff. So this was over 75% off of what I paid. It was also in my daughter's size. So I thought at the very least, 
I will put it in Angelina's thrifted gift box next Christmas if it doesn't sell in over a year and give me a profit that is worth my while. On my way out, I saw the clerk who I'm familiar with because I shop at the store a lot and I said, just curious, I said, I ended up buying the coat. I said, when was it put out? She's like, we just put it out today, which actually made me feel better because I personally don't think this would have lasted very long for $250. I am jumping into this video with a bad cold. I'm so sorry, but I wanted to let you know that I am spreading rumors my coat is not the same as the one that I purchased. I realized once I was looking over the coat that I bought, so this is the one that I just bought, it has a straight back. And I remembered that mine has a little bit of a dip in the back. It's a little bit longer and it also has this zipper that you can open and a cinched waist. There are many differences. Anyways, I have the Ross Claire for women. And interestingly enough, when I looked this one up, it is the Chateau for men. So I still would be feel very comfortable giving this to Angie. It is a small for men. You can see that the women's patch is a little bit smaller. It's interesting to compare them side by side. And the arm is slightly longer for the men. Um, so I don't think that's lined up perfectly, but it is a little bit longer and it's more of a boxy cut because it doesn't cinch in the center or anything. This has a little side pocket here. Mine does not, actually these coats are nothing alike. It was just the black patch that was the same in the fur. Anyway, this is immense, but the good news about this, sorry, we're a little overexposed because I'm using the lighting from my ring light. I'm very sick today. I just have a really bad cold. I took a COVID test. I don't have COVID, but just a cold that's killing me. The good news is this men's chateau is sold out online on Neiman Marcus, also at Canada Goose. And there was one other site that I saw that this size was sold out. It seems that they're sold out in the extra large and in the small, and this is a size small. I actually thought when I saw that it was a men's coat and it was a small that that was going to work to my disadvantage, but it didn't. I thought this was the Trillium jacket. I was so confused on all fronts. Neither one of these is the Trillium. Mine's the Ross Claire. This is the Men's Chateau. I have it listed for $8.49 based on the comps. Again, this is mid-March, so not the best time to list this, but I'm feeling really confident that I will probably double my money on this even after fees. Most of the comps were over $500. If I'd sold this via a direct sale, like if somebody saw it online and messaged me directly, I could probably take a little money off for that person and do a direct sale. So I went for it. Um, and I'm actually so hot right now. One of the reasons I also had confidence in purchasing this was because I owned it. I knew what to look for. And um, there were just so many markers that uh, showed me that this was a real Canada goose. So it had the tag on the back here. It had the inside pocket. I also believe if this was going to be faked, they would have done a red patch instead of the black Canada Goose. Um, there are also the markers on the inside. It has um, like a little pocket for the tags. And then it goes in there. It has the hologram. Can you see that? I might want to back up for you. It also has this extra one quality assurance tag. It, it's got like a booklet here. So I felt very confident. I do not pay up for things that I myself wouldn't use in some capacity. If I thought there was any chance that I would lose money on this, which I don't think there's a chance, I would make sure it was for myself or a loved one before I purchased it. It's just my rule of thumb when I'm paying up for something. And in this case, my daughter goes to school in Pennsylvania. It's freezing there. I would never buy her a Canada Goose at full price for school just for fear that she would leave it somewhere. This would definitely be a practical gift for her. It's in classic black. I don't think this is going out of style anytime soon. This is something that I felt comfortable making the investment in. So wow, that was a little bit of a rush when I walked in. It was the first thing I saw at the second store. So I put it on my Instagram story immediately. I found this at a store outside of Boston. It was in the store for just a day and I was there at about one o'clock so it couldn't have been out on the floor too long. Also at the store I made another investment purchase. So this is a Givenchy bag. It is a tote. It's kind of this like crinkle pattern. It's in beautiful condition. Sorry. It is a hobo style and a lot of the comps that I saw on this bag uh, were $250 and above and this was $50. I spent $317 at the second location. I was like oh my 
my goodness, I spent 68 at the first stop and 317 at the second stop. So it was an expensive day for me. Um, I have this listed for $324 and I'm hoping that it will sell somewhere between 200 and 250. So this is a Givenchy bag. It is a really large size. It's a solid tote. The leather is really soft. The inside is immaculate. I was just in the zone. I was like, well, if I'm buying the Canada Goose, I might as well really go for it today. So between these two items, I spent $300. I actually got $10 off because at this store, anytime you spend $200, you get $10 off. So I'm calling the coat $240 instead of $250. So $290 for these two items. If the coat sells for $600 and this sells for $200, or even if we say five and two, that's $700. That's going to be $140 that goes back to Poshmark. If those are my platform fees, just assuming it sells on Poshmark, eBay would be similar. Um, so 700 minus 140, that would be 560. And my investment was 300. So it would still be a $260 profit. And I feel pretty confident with those numbers. I feel more confident that the coat will sell for above 500 than this, but we'll see on the Givenchy. I have the Givenchy Antigona. I did an unboxing of that in a previous video. So I do love the brand. Um, and I don't think that's like a super trendy style right now, but a hobo bag I feel is always Always something that people are seeking tote bags nice solid quality leather items okay so since I'm going backwards at this store um, I'll show you the other things that I picked up here um, it was a good Bowden day I found a lot of Bowden at my first stop and I picked these up at the second stop these are just perfect shoes for spring they have this little laser cut detail they are ankle sandals so pretty leather they are size 40 they're in excellent condition I do like Bowdoin, especially a lot of their spring stuff. They have a lot of floral stuff. I'll show you what else I got for Bowdoin. Um, I picked up these jean shorts. These Somebody bundled them like immediately, but they haven't sent an offer. These are Levi's 501s. They don't look like a high rise, which I think is the only thing. They're probably a mid rise. If they were high rise, I feel like they would sell for even more. But they're 501s. They are a size 29, I believe. And they're really cute. They're almost like a gray cutoff. They also have a section in this store where items are marked just $1.99. So I love to check out that rack. You never know when you're going to get it, when they're putting things over there. They're things that have been in the store for um, over a period of time that they're comfortable with. I don't know what that marker is, but I was so shocked to find this. This was in the $1.99 section and it's an Amanda Uppertured. And this is a relatively new brand to me. I found a black dress at the bins, which was the last thrifting trip I had before this. So to find this just days later for $1.99, it's like two Amanda Uppertured dresses for about four or five dollars between the bins and this. This is really cute. It's kind of like a little skater girl. It's got the um, smocking back here. I think I have this listed 60 to 80 dollars. I don't know. I don't have any experience with this brand, so I'm excited to see how it does. Also at this store in the $1.99 section, I got this. It's probably vintage. I'm not sure though. It's old tag Trina Turk. I'm pretty sure that's the old tag. I feel like this is like Y2K combo, like brown and pink. And this was also $1.99. I'm likely going to list this for my own closet and market Y2K, see how it does. But the rest of the items that I picked up were for my mystery boxes. So I got this cabbie, this square tag cabbie jacket. Cabbie is kind of a slow mover for me unless it's a really unique piece. So where this is just a plain black jacket, I feel like this is a really great value piece to put into a mystery box. So that's going in my mystery boxes. I loved this piece and it's from Forever 21, but I am going to put this in my mystery box as well. It is a size medium, Forever 21. It's just this like satin little track jacket, bomber so cute. I couldn't believe this was still there. So $1.99, that is such a nice piece for a mystery box. And I always feel better when I have like one or two like nice anchor pieces in a mystery box. 
um, and I think that is so nice. This I'm probably going to send to the real real. This is a Lafayette 148. It was also in the 199 rack, which thank God I had to make up for my $300 that I bought there. So I was happy to find Lafayette 148, Amanda Uppertured. This is just a basic sweater. I don't have a lot of luck selling this on my own and it sells pretty quickly at the real real. Won't sell for a lot of money, but where it was just a $2 investment, I feel pretty comfortable bringing that to them. Let's backtrack now and go to the first location that I went to. Shout out to Tina, who is a viewer who I saw at my first stop and we had a nice chat. This, I've got a few kids things. These were all on a brand new rack and I just loved these pieces. This is a crew cuts, new with tag dress. It's so cute. It's in this Kelly green with the light pink uh, belt. New with tag, size 10. Um, their kids wear is $2.99. So I got these three items for under $10. Um, this is a Hannah Anderson sweater, which I think is so cute with the little um, floral detail there. This is a size 120. And then I also got this Iviva half zip little workout jacket, which is really cute. It has like the reflective detail here. It has the thumb holes. Iviva is the little, is the girl version of Lululemon. Um, I don't think this company is in business anymore, but I still pick up their stuff. That is the Iviva logo. This is a size 14. They also had a black jacket, but um, gosh, it had some pilling and Lululemon that's been around for a while in black can really look weathered. So I left that one behind, but I picked up these three to sell on my own. Okay, more Bowden. I loved these shoes. These um, came out, I think, while I was talking to Tina. There were two pairs of shoes that I grabbed that were just fresh out. These are so cute. They have calf hair toes with the little um, polka dots, and then the rest of them are suede, and I think this is such a great color for spring. And these are new. You can see there's the sticker on the back. They've never been worn. So I'm listing these as new without tag, even though they actually have that little tag on the back. Um, they're not in the box or anything. They're 39.5, which is like a size nine, nine and a half. And they are so nice. I would say that these are narrow shoe, but I have these listed in the $70 range. Some people have these listed at $90 and they are, and mine are new. So I'm hoping these will go between 50 and 60. I don't know. It's a kind of a specific style, but so adorable. And then these are also Bowden. I got three pairs of Bowden shoes, two at one store and one at the other. These are really cute, classic block heel. Is this my size? These are a little big for me. Otherwise I would keep it. These are the only types of heels I can do now is like a chunky heel. And these are just suede, navy blue. Again, I love navy blue in the spring. All those shoes from Bowdoin, all perfect for spring, all listed in my Poshmark closet. Everything should be listed by the time this video goes live. I also got these Madewell jean shorts. These are just a 27. They're shorts at the store, only $4.99. They used to be $3.99. This is like my favorite store. That's not really my favorite anymore, but I still find some decent stuff there. It's just never going to be like it used to be under the new owners. Um, also in this store, they used to have a section of items that they would mark up, items that they valued they would mark up. And sometimes you would flip through and you would find like a Burberry dress for a little girl or really high-end jeans. And other times you would find like a Coles brand that they marked up. So it didn't always make sense, but they still had this section with nice things. They completely did away with it and they're claiming that it's all on the floor. My theory though, based on what I'm finding there, is that they're pulling stuff and maybe selling on their own. It's just so different now. It's so different. Anyways, no complaints. It is not the thrift store's job to supply me with my reselling stuff. But when you get used to a certain store and you love it so much, but everything's temporary. I've been telling myself that with the way Poshmark has been, my sales have been so bad this month and I feel like so many people are experiencing it. I think they're messing with the algorithm again. I don't know what's going on, but it's really given me this fear like, oh my gosh, what is happening to reselling? Like, do I need to lean into eBay more? And the answer is absolutely yes. I'm leaning into eBay more. I'm still trying on Depop, although I haven't made a sale yet. A lot of people have messaged me, so thank you, to tell me that I should be using hashtags within the listings and that I should be editing every day. Just press edit and then save, and that refreshes it. It's kind of a way of sharing on Depop, but I haven't been doing that. So I need to go revise all my Depop listings. This is... um 
Lululemon. This is a nice tank top. This was all on a new rack as well. And funny enough, tank tops at the store are supposed to be $2.99. And the woman who rang me out, first off, she rang this skirt, which um, was a really great deal. This was new with tag, Lululemon, so I shouldn't really complain too much. $88. This is the on the fly skirt. Their skirts are just $6.49. So I paid $6.49 for this. I think I have it priced at $59. The comps aren't tremendous on this, but I love this color and it is new with tag. It's a size six. So I have it priced at $59. So almost $30 less than retail. But she saw this and she's like, wow, you really scored on that one. I said, yeah, I was really excited. And then I got three tank tops. And I said, tank tops are $2.99, right? And she said, yes. And then she looked and she saw they were Lululemon. And when I got to my car, she charged me $4.99 for each tank top. I was kind of annoyed. I don't know. That was, it was a weird thing. Um, she wrote them as sweats and then they came up as $4.99 each. This is just a white Lululemon it has the the Y back. This I'm putting in my daughter's Easter basket. I'm not going to sell this, but it's really cute. It's a white ribbed tank top, which I don't, I haven't seen this before from Lululemon. I feel like this is probably a more current piece. Um, and lastly, I'm just going to grab this. This is on my mannequin, but this actually had some decent comps. I don't remember the name of this, but it has like the X in the back like a nice thick strap and it goes across this i believe is also a size six and it has a shelf bra some of these comps were in the 30 dollars range so i think i have this listed at 38 dollars. i believe that top retailed for 68 dollars. so i don't know what it was about that tank that made it more expensive because i think typically lululemon tanks are usually between like 48 and 58 dollars retail when they first get released also at that same store on a new rack the new racks at the store are usually where it's at so i i like stock the new racks. These are J. Crew linen blend. They're just a basic short, but these are new with tag. So the retail on these are $50. I think I have these listed at $35. Uh, so these will probably sell between $28 and $30, $30, $25 and $30. They're really, really cute. But I was excited to get so many new with tag items from this store. I grabbed these J. Crew shoes, and this may have been a little bit of a miss for me because I didn't notice. I mean, I have to include that little tip that is uh, worn, but when you look at the shoes, even straight on almost, I guess I have to tilt them down a little bit. You really can't see it, but that combined with the fact that it's like a sparkle heel, which I think is just adorable. I just don't know if these are right for the season. These are actually a size nine, which I'm usually eight and a half in sneakers and a nine in dress shoes. I would probably wear these. I think they're super cute. I love all that's going on, the suede, toe cap and then the snake skin pattern and then the glitter heel. These are just really cute. Like for a night out to dinner, if you don't feel like wearing heels, you could wear these with some like jeans and just like a black top. This would be so adorable out. So I'm going to try them on. Um, I do have them listed because I did the draft anyway. So they're listed, but they are so cute. All of their shoes at this store, they used to be $4.99. They're now $5.99, so just $6 for shoes. Not bad at all. These shoes also came out while I was talking to Tina, and I just saw them out of the corner of my eye, so I grabbed them, and they are free people. And they have this thick suede strap that kind of goes around the ankle. These are fantastic platforms, like brand new on the bottom. They are so nice. They do have a little bit of a scuffing because it's that really rubbery heel, but I don't think they've ever been worn or they've just been like tried on, but they're really great shoes. I listed these at $75 and these already have like five likes on them. Just listed them yesterday. They're considered ankle boots. So you look at them head on like this. They're really amazing. They are chunky and they are so nice. So $5.99 for these. These shoes hopefully will pay for the entire $68 haul if they sell where I want them to sell. These are a size nine, I believe. Let me see. They're a size 39. I'm almost wondering if it's the same person who donated some of these shoes because they're all similar sizing. Anyways, I love these. That is where I'm going to end today's video. I hope you liked this episode of Ship and Shop. I love doing Ship and Shop videos, uh, although I didn't really do a lot of the thrift with me with you. I was kind of in the zone today, so I was more thrifting and less uh, filming, but I did want to show you some of the items I left behind, so I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Be sure to like and subscribe. Um, I also have some video suggestions at the end screen for you if you want to see more of my content. I will be back real soon with another video. Thanks everybody. Bye.